What's going on guys, Billy here, and with the release of the new DJI Mavic Mini comes a new companion application called DJI Fly. So what I want to do in today's video is walk through the entire app from front to back and go over what all the different settings and all of the different icons mean to help you understand how to fly your drone. And this is going to be especially important for anybody who's brand new to flying drones, as I know a lot of people will be picking up the Mavic Mini as their first drone. Now just to give you guys a little bit of information before we really get into things here, this right here is the current first firmware version I'm running on my Mavic Mini, and I'm also going to put the app version I'm on for the DJI Fly app. Chances are, in the future, DJI is going to add some features to this drone, and I'm on a very early version of the Fly application. So if I don't have something in my app that you have because you're watching this video at a later date, just know it's not because I skipped over it, it's just because it's not in the application yet. But with that said, everything should be pretty similar moving forward from here. Anyway, guys, let's just get into it. Now, once we open up the Fly application, this is the page that we're greeted with. I like to consider this as the home page of the Fly application. And we can do things like view our current location in the top left corner. We can even tap on that location and view our place on the map. And we can see places where we can and where we can't fly through DJI's Fly Safe system. Also in the top right corner marked by the book icon, this is where we can find some tips and tricks and some tutorials about how to get more familiar with the Mavic Mini. In the bottom left corner, we have got our album, and this is where we can view some photos and videos shot with the Mavic Mini stored on the SD card. You can go ahead and actually create some edits right through the application. Uh, also, we can access SkyPixel, which is DJI's photo sharing platform. They sometimes host some contests on here, so that's pretty cool. Um, and then finally, we've got Profile on this homepage. And within here, we can view our flight logs on the left side of the screen. On the right side, we can view the DJI Forum, the DJI Store, Find My Drone, which we'll talk about in just a few minutes here. And also, we can look at some miscellaneous settings. But look, all of this stuff is very self-explanatory. What I really want to do is tap on Go Fly in the bottom right corner and bring us to the main flight page because this is where a lot of things might start to get confusing, especially if you're brand new to flying drones, because I know that once I first started with the DJI Go application, I looked at a screen very similar to this and said, okay, what does any of this mean? Now, I've actually got my drone sitting over there pointed out the window. So for the rest of this video, as I walk through this application, you guys will get a beautiful view of Maniunk here in Philadelphia. But what I want to do now is go over what all of these different little icons and these different pieces of text mean that are overlaid over the live feed coming back from the drone. And just to make things a little bit easier to follow along, I'm going to start in the top left corner, work my way over to the right, move down, work from left to right, and then again, move down, working left to right. So basically, it's like we're reading a book. Now, starting in the top left corner with that back arrow, pretty self-explanatory. Once we tap on that, it brings us back to the home screen. We can tap on Go Fly to bring us back to the in-flight screen. Now, next to that, we've got our flight mode. Right now, it says mode P. That's because we're in position mode. But just a tip here, you can actually tap on your flight mode to cycle through the different flight modes. So right now, we're in mode P. We can cycle to mode S, which is sport mode. So now we get a faster top speed. And then also we get mode C, which is CineSmooth mode, which essentially slows down some of the rotational movements of the drone so that while we're shooting video, the drone appears more cinematic and the video appears more cinematic. And I've got to say that I use it all the time. It really does help me take more cinematic video. So I'm going to move back over to position mode here. Now, next to that is the status of our drone. Right now, it says takeoff permitted. So if I wanted to, I could start up my props and start flying. Other times, they'll display like a warning here. But we'll tap on this and it brings us to the status of our drone. So up here at the top, it says that everything is normal. Underneath of that, we can set our return to home altitude. So at which altitude we want the drone to come back to us, which I usually like to set probably around 150 feet to start. But this all depends on what the size of the objects are around you or how high they are. So if you're around tall buildings, you want to make sure your RTH is set even higher. Now moving down, we've got our max altitude. So what we have here is our max altitude set to 393 feet. So whatever value you have in here, your drone will not go higher than that. So somewhere around 400 feet, I found that this slider is a little bit imprecise. So if I try to get it right on 400 feet, oh, I almost got it there, 400.2 feet. Now moving down, we've got our max distance, the same principle as max altitude. So we can set, say, four, 5,000 feet right here. So once we hit 5,051 feet, the drone will come to a stop. It's almost like an invisible wall, which I leave turned off. I don't like hitting those invisible walls. I just like to fly freely. So I've got my max distance set to no limit. Now moving down here, we've got some information regarding our SD card. It shows us the total amount available as well as the total amount free on the SD card. Also, we can see like how many more photos that we can shoot with this drone or with the camera with the remaining SD card space. 
And also we can format our SD card. Now formatting the SD card deletes everything on the card. So if you're gonna format it, make sure that you've got all your photos and videos off of the SD card and backed up on another device. Now moving on into the top right corner, this is where things might become a little bit confusing because there's a lot of icons here and you might have no idea what they mean. But again, we're gonna be walking through all of these. So the first one marked by the satellite icon with the bars, almost like what it looks like on your phone, um, is showing you your GPS connection to those satellites connected to your drone. So. It shows how many satellites are connected, which right now is eight. It's kind of bouncing around between seven or nine. And then it shows our GPS connection to those satellites. So right now I'm sitting at around three bars because I'm inside, so my GPS connection isn't all that great. But once you get outside, you should have a really good, strong connection depending on where you're at. Now next to that, we've got like a Wi-Fi icon, and this shows the signal strength between the drone and the remote controller itself. So the more interference that you encounter, the further you fly your drone, the lower that will go. And you wanna make sure that you always got a really strong connection between your remote controller and the drone so that you don't lose connection. Now next to that, pretty self-explanatory, this shows us uh, the battery life. So right now we have 84% battery life, again, pretty standard. And then next to that shows our estimated flight time remaining. So if we tap on this, it actually shows us more information like our total flight time, the battery temperature, which right now is 44 degrees Celsius. And then also we can see the different voltages of each of the cells within that battery. And right now you'll see, I've actually got an error popping up in the top left corner. I've had the drone running for a while because I'm trying to make this video. So it says that the processor chip is overheated and that's a sign that I want to turn the drone off. And if this happened during flight, I would land it so that my drone doesn't get damaged. Now. In the top right corner, you'll see these three dots. This is like some of the advanced settings. So we're not gonna touch on these just yet. We're gonna go through those towards the end of the video. So let's move on on this screen. Now moving to the left side with the arrow pointing up, if we tap on this, it gives us the ability to auto take off. We can also take our drone off by pushing the two sticks. I'm gonna move it towards the middle pushing the two sticks towards the center. I'm not gonna do it because my drone is pretty close to the window over there, but if we wanna do an auto takeoff, we can hold the takeoff and the drone will rise by itself. Heading over to the right side of the screen, this is where all of our camera information is displayed. So that big white button allows us to shoot photos. So we'll see, we take a photo, we take a photo, we take a photo. So this allows us to shoot photos right within the application. And right underneath of that, marked by the play button, is going to bring us to our gallery. So these are the, the photos that we just shot right now. And you can also view all the photos and videos taken on your SD card. Uh, above that is the shutter button. We already went over that. But above that, marked by the square icon, is some of our video and photo settings. So when we tap on this, it'll bring us to the option to switch between photo, video, and quick shots, which right now are not enabled because my drone is sitting and it's not actually flying. But within these settings, we can also go and tweak how our camera shoots just a little bit. We don't have too much settings here to tweak or change. So with photo, we can choose between a single shot or a timed shot sometime between 60 seconds or two seconds. And now for video, we can choose our resolution, so 2.7K or 1080p, and then we can change the uh, frame rate that goes along with that. So we can choose like 60 frames per second or 25 frames per second for 1080p. But for me, I like shooting in 2.7K, it's a higher resolution video, and we get 30 frames per second, or we can shoot in 30 frames per second with that. Now moving to the bottom left corner of the screen, you'll see that little map icon. If we tap on that, it opens up a much larger map. And then if we tap on it again, it brings up the full view of the map and it kind of shrinks down the camera view. So from here, just like the map on that home screen, we can view around, we can see some of the different warning zones and some of the different controlled uh, airspace points. Also, if we're flying around, we'll see our flight path, and then we can also see where our home point is. We can take advantage of some of the different tools on the right side, so we can see like a key for some of those different um, restricted zones on our map. We can also clear our flight path using the eraser icon. We can also reset our home point. We can change the orientation of the map, and we can also change the different overlays on the map. So satellite, mixed, or your standard view. Now, Find My Drone is nothing new to DJI drones, but they're definitely promoting it a little bit more with this drone. They have it more easily accessible rather than the DJI Go application. And this shows you the last known location of your drone. You can also have the drone start flashing and beeping. So if you're right on top of it and you've got no idea where it's at, you can tap on start flashing and beeping. And it starts beeping. It's a pretty loud, annoying noise. It's something that can definitely be heard outside. So if you crash your drone, you've got trouble finding it, go ahead and jump in to find my drone and you can have the drone start flashing and beeping to easier find it. And of course, you've got those GPS coordinates right there. 
Now let's jump back into the live view here. We'll shrink down that map. And right next to the map shows us our flight telemetry. So H shows us the height of the drone. D shows us the distance of the drone. And then above that, it shows us the speed correlated with that direction of movement. So with the height, right? The speed above that shows us our vertical speed, whether it go up or down. And then above distance shows us our horizontal speed. So how fast we're flying forward, how fast we're flying backward, side to side, things of that nature. So you'll get comfortable viewing that telemetry as you're flying around and you'll get an understanding of better how it works when you begin to get some flight hours on your drone. Now moving over, you can barely see it here. Maybe if I tilt my gimbal up, you'll be able to see it. It's marked by like a little red circle, half circle here. And if we tap on this, it's going to give us where our aircraft is, uh, what direction it's in, in terms of where we're facing with our remote controller. Right now I've got a really weak GPS signal, so it's not working for me. But if you're disoriented and you've got no idea where your drone is, you can use this to help you figure out where it's at and bring it back home. You can use that in coordination with that map. And it's really gonna be able to give you a good idea at which direction your drone is flying. Uh, oops. Now let's move on here. I'm totally messing up. <laughs> now let's move on here to the right side. This gives us some more control over the exposure value of our camera. So right now we're shooting video. We can tweak the exposure value so we can go up. We can make it brighter as we increase the value or we can go down and make it darker. So this is gonna be good if we say are shooting in an area where we want it to be lighter and it's just too dark, we can adjust the exposure value. Also, we can lock that exposure value so, you does, so it doesn't consistently change. You'll notice as I pitch the gimbal up here, the exposure starts to darken because I'm looking at such a bright sky. And if we go the opposite way and we look down, the exposure starts to brighten up. So if we lock the exposure, it stays still and it doesn't move all around. Now we should be able to shoot manual video with the Mavic Mini, but unfortunately we can't. If we, if we could, we would tap this bottom right icon that says auto, but it says unable to switch camera modes and current shooting mode. If we were to switch over to shooting photo here, we could actually change by tapping that icon in the bottom right corner, the camera icon. We can flip into the manual exposure settings, change the shutter if we wanted to here. We can make it darker, we can make it lighter. We could also change the ISO from 100 all the way up to 3200. Unfortunately, this is only available when shooting photos, kind of a bummer. Um, but we'll jump back in here to the video settings. So that pretty much wraps up this screen right here. All these little icons are hard to understand, but now we're gonna jump into the three dots in the top right corner and go over what all these different advanced settings mean. Now, starting things off with the safety section, up at the top, we can change our max altitude, the max distance, and the auto return to home altitude. But remember, we already took a look at these over in the status section of the aircraft. But if you guys wanna change those settings, you can also come here under safety within the advanced settings. Now, moving down, we can also change our home point, we can update the home point like mid flight if we move locations. Just to clarify here, you don't have to manually set the home point before every single flight. The drone does that once it establishes a GPS connection. But if you move mid flight to a brand new location and your home point is like further down and you want the drone to return to home where you're at, you can update that home point right here within the safety section of the advanced settings. Now moving down, we've got some information regarding the IMU and the compass sensors built into the DJI Mavic Mini. I already made a full separate video covering those sensors, how to calibrate them, what they do, what they mean, when you should calibrate them. So I'm gonna leave a link in the top corner. I'm also gonna put a link to a playlist in the description. And in there you can find all of my Mavic Mini videos and within that playlist is how to calibrate the compass and the IMU as well as what they do. Now moving down, we've got our advanced settings. In here, we've got emergency propeller stop. So if for some reason we need to stop the propellers right away, we can do so with this emergency technique that's shown through the graphics. Also, we have payload mode. So if we're adding a payload to our drone, we need to check this off so that it can properly determine how much more flight time you have. So I guess it uses like a different algorithm to determine how much flight time is left with the current battery percentage. So if you're adding like the propeller guards on there, you wanna check off payload mode. Now, finally, within the safety section, we have Find My Drone, which we already covered. This is just another way at getting to that um, part of the application. And we've also got Remote Identification, which I'm not gonna cover in this video because as of right now, it's not necessary. The FAA is in talks about all of this stuff. So look, I'm not gonna cover this right now, but it's here for possibly when we need it. Moving on to the next tab here that says control. This is where we can change some of the settings that deal with the control of our aircraft. Imagine that. So first of all, we can change our flight mode between CineSmooth, position or sport mode. But remember the tip I told you guys from that main flight screen, we can cycle through the different flight modes. So it's a waste of time coming in here and trying to change it when you can quickly do it from your in-flight screen. Underneath of that, we can choose the units 
displayed in the telemetry. So you can choose between Imperial or the metric system, whatever you guys are familiar with. You can also view the metric system in either meters or kilometers. Next up, we can change the way that our gimbal reacts to movement. So we've got follow mode, which keeps the gimbal level as you move from left to right. It's going to keep the horizon straight. Or if you switch over to FPV mode, then the FPV, or, or I'm sorry, the gimbal will bank with the drone as you fly. So it gives you the sensation that you're flying an FPV drone. Now jumping into the advanced section here, which by the way is just above where it says FPV, Tap on advanced. This allows us to change the pitch speed of the gimbal, so how fast the gimbal looks up and down, as well as the smoothness of the gimbal when it's pitching. So that's how smooth the gimbal comes to a start and how it comes to a stop. Underneath of that, we've got upward gimbal rotation. If you turn this on, you'll see over here on the left side, the camera begins to point upward, and that's because we have this turned on. Otherwise, it would be locked right at zero degrees, and there's no way to look upwards. Now underneath of that, we've got reset gimbal or recenter gimbal, which just shoots the gimbal downwards or it shoots it straight forwards. This allows the gimbal to just recenter itself if you're at a weird angle and you just want the gimbal to come right back straight forward. Um, and above that, I forgot to mention, we've got gimbal calibration here, which we can do so if our gimbal is experiencing some sort of issue, we can recalibrate it so that it performs properly. We'll jump back in here to control. Moving down, we've got our stick mode. This is just personal preference. However you like to operate your drone, you can change between mode one, mode two, or mode three. Go ahead and give those a try and see which one you prefer. Underneath of that, we've got RC calibration. So this allows us to calibrate the sticks of our remote controller. And then finally, we've got flight tutorial if that's something that you wanna go through if you're brand new to the Mavic Mini. Moving on to the third tab here listed as camera. This is where we can find some of the advanced settings for our camera, even though there's not many things to change in here. So first, we can change the image size or the aspect ratio of the photos we shoot. We can go with four by three or 16 by nine. We can also view some information about the SD card, which we already saw under the status of the aircraft. And then finally, we can jump into those advanced settings. So we can turn on our histogram that allows you to monitor the exposure level. We can also turn on different grid lines. So I'll turn all of these on here and show you that you can add these like cross lines. You can add up and down lines. You can add a crosshair right in the center. For me, I find that all of that other stuff is very confusing and it kind of takes up the way or it gets in the way of flying my drone. So for me, I keep that little crosshair on so I can line up my photos appropriately and so that if I'm orbiting a subject, I can make sure that I keep it in the center of the frame. Underneath of that, we get an overexposure warning. So if there's a portion of the image that's overexposed, it's gonna let us know through some zebra patterns. Underneath of that, we can turn on the anti-flicker so that if we're shooting and there's lights in the frame, it's not going to flicker. We can match the hertz of the, of the specific lights. Also video subtitles, I'm turning that off. I never turn video subtitles on on any of the drones that I fly. Also, we've got our cache when recording. So as we're shooting video, a cached version stores on our mobile device, a lower resolution version of the video that we're shooting. And we can choose down here, what we want the size to be. So like if we say hit 16 gigs of total cache capacity, then it'll just start deleting old files for the new files and you can change what level of, I guess, cache storage you want right there at the bottom. Now to wrap up the camera settings, we'll go back here, scroll down, you can reset the camera settings if you want to their default state. So there's not much to really play around with here. We've got two more tabs, but honestly, there's not much to change within them. So under image transmission here, we'll see the frequency band that we're operating over, which is 5.8 gigahertz with the Mavic Mini. And also we'll see the different channels that we can operate over, the channels that our drone and our remote can connect to to talk to each other. And we can see the level of interference on those channels. Now we can choose to select those channels manually, but for me, I like to set it to auto so that it can automatically choose the best channel for me and I don't have to worry about it. So I keep it set to auto and that's pretty much all we've got to see under transmission. And finally, we've got about, this is just all of the about information from our drone, like the aircraft version, the RC firmware version, the name, the model. We can also see the app version. We can see how many times the battery was charged. And then if we scroll down further, we can see things like our serial number for the camera, for the drone and for the remote controller, but I'm not gonna scroll down just because that's sensitive information. All right, so guys, that pretty much wraps up my full walkthrough of the DJI Fly application. I'm pretty sure I addressed every single thing within the app, but if you've got any further questions, feel free to let me know down in the comment section what those are, and I'll do my best to try and get back to you. Also, if they release like a big major update to the application that totally overhauls anything, which I don't see DJI doing, I'll make an updated version to this video. So if you're watching this video like six months or a year after it's uploaded, feel free to go ahead and check down in the description because I may have made an update 
updated version and you can go ahead and watch that video instead of watching this one. I probably should have said that in the beginning of the video, but hey, I'm telling you guys now. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. If you just got your Mavic Mini, I hope that you watched this video and learned how this entire application operates because it really is crucial to know what all these little things mean to understand what your drone is doing, how it operates, and to make sure that nothing is going wrong. Anyway, guys, I'll talk to you later. Peace.